Hey everybody, Ryan here. Right now, the most common question that I'm seeing in my comments is about the custom sites that I use. And so I thought I would make a quick video covering everything you need to know about user sites, including where to download them, how to install them, and then how to select them on the vehicle, and a couple of tips and tricks to go along with that, as well as my own personal reasons for using custom sites. And first things first, you gotta get yourself some sites. Now the main hub is actually hosted by Gaijin for people to upload their own custom content to, and that is War Thunder Live, which I will link down in the description. Now if you find yourself on the main page, don't get distracted by the skins and head over to the Sites tab, and this will take you into the Past Week filter, so you'll only see the most recently uploaded sites. You can either change it to the past month, all time, or you can go straight to the search box, ignoring all of the anime sites, and search for historical, realistic, or anything else. Now there's of course a lot of options to choose from, so I'm just gonna pick this site pack for modern Russian vehicles. And now you just click on the description and it will open up the download page for the post. Now pretty much every site you download will come in a zipped format, especially packs of sites, so I would recommend 7-zip for this. And installation can be done with the game open or closed. But if you do have it open already, then I'll have a quick tip on that later as well. And now the next step, of course, is to install the sites. And so the easiest way to do that, if you don't know where your War Thunder game installation folder is, and you're using Steam, of course, is go to the properties of the game on Steam, go to the local files tab and click browse. That'll take you straight to the main War Thunder folder. And then you need to find or create a user sites folder named just like this. And then once you have that folder open, all you do is select all of the site folders from the pack you downloaded and drag them straight into the user sites folder. So now that you've got the sites installed, it's time to select them in the game, which is also per vehicle. Now, if you already had your game open, just go into a test drive on the vehicle that you installed a site for and press left alt and F9 at the same time, which is the default binding for refreshing the user sites cache. And the game will be unresponsive for a certain amount of time, so don't click anything. And now for actually selecting the site, just pause the game, go to the Options, Common Battle Settings, and find the Use Alternative Grid Site drop-down box. In there you should see the default site and any custom sites you've installed, along with the Short Range Site and the Add a Grid Site option, which I will talk about in a second. And so all you do now is select the site that you've installed and go into the Gunner Site, and there you go, you're set. Really quick though, if this video has helped you out so far, then don't forget to leave a little sacrifice on the Like button. Anyways. Now a quick tip for new vehicles and user sites. So when a new vehicle is added, it won't automatically add a folder for the user sites for the vehicle. And that's where add a grid site comes in. And this will create a new folder with the proper name inside of the user sites folder. And along with a copy of the default grid site, usually called site underscore one. And also you can technically put any site file into any other folder for any vehicle and it will load but your mileage may vary on how well it works. Like with vehicles that I can't find a specific site for on War Thunder Live, I'll just look for a vehicle that is similar enough that I already have a site for, make a new folder using add a grid site, and just chuck that site in there and call it good. And sometimes the game will have an error loading user sites on launch, which will do nothing on your end until you get into a battle, go into your gunner site, and find that your site is not there. Don't panic though, because just hit left alt F9 and it will refresh the cache. And once that's completed, go back into the site selection dropdown and just toggle off of your preferred site by going to the default and back or to any other site and back and you're fixed. And now I'm not gonna tell you how to create or customize user sites in detail in the text files because number one, I don't know how to make them. <laughs> and number two, that's not really within the scope of this video. However, a couple of things if you find yourself downloading some user sites that you're not satisfied with, here's a couple of things that are easily adjustable within the BLK file. So firstly is line size molt or multiplier. If you make this higher or lower, then all of the lines drawn in the site will become thicker or thinner, depending on how you adjust the value. And another funny one that happens sometimes is sites will have apply correction to gun as no, which will mean when you use a laser range finder, it will not automatically adjust the gun to the range. And if you find that happening in a site that you have, you can even use the standard notepad included with Windows and change this value to B equals yes. And if you're curious about where I get the sites that I personally use, they're all from War Thunder Live. But unfortunately, I am very lazy about saving links to every single site that I've downloaded, which are a lot of specific random sites. However, I have uploaded my entire user sites folder onto my Discord server, which I will of course leave a link to in the description. 
Anyways, why exactly do I use custom sights anyways? Mostly it's for the immersion. I just like using the real sights that these vehicles were actually equipped with. But also the default grid sight is just very cluttered. And especially when you reach top tier vehicles that have laser range finders, all those lines just become irrelevant because most of the time you're just lasing your targets and the sight automatically sets itself and you don't even need to look at any of that other stuff on the screen and it's just in the way. And also the default sight has not really changed much at all over the lifetime of this game and it's just old. And having a change of pace in that regard is pretty nice. And so using the Leopard 2A6 as a quick example, here is of course the default grid sight. There's all these lines everywhere, pretty standard, you can laze, it's whatever. But when you go in and select the EMS-15 realistic sight, things get a whole lot better in my opinion. It's just so much cleaner, more immersive, and this sight in particular also has a really visible alternative reticle color mode. And so whether you just want a change of pace or you're into the immersion like me, or also agree that the default sight is just too cluttered for use in top tier, or you're one of those people that wants an anime cat girl as your sight, then go ham, there's a sight for you. And that's gonna do it for now. And again, if this helped you out at all, don't forget to leave a little sacrifice to the like button because it's getting lonely over there. And also, if you have any more questions about user sites or want to share your own experiences with them, then drop it in the comments. Anyways, see you around.